Hi everyone, in today's video we are going to compare and contrast two popular SQL on Hadoop technologies that's primarily Apache Hive and Apache Impala. And in doing so we'll compare and contrast the two against a few of the parameters. We'll also sidestep into understanding the architectural differences as we compare and contrast these two technologies. And finally we will wrap up by looking at a hybrid use case. As with any modern comparisons, uh, it's not necessarily a case of one or the other. So it's not a case about using Hive uh, as standalone versus uh, Impala standalone. It's normally a case where we can take the best of these two technologies and build hybrid scenarios where we leverage these two tools uh, effectively together. So that's really the agenda for this video. So onwards to our first step, which is really to understand um, the differences between how Hive and Impala operate. Uh, so just before we dive into the details, I guess it's worthwhile giving a brief history of how these two projects uh, began its life, if you will. So Hive was um, uh, a tool that was uh, initially incubated within Facebook and uh, progressively uh, given to the Apache Software Foundation and uh, represents one of the early um, solutions uh, which represented uh, SQL on Hadoop technology. Um, Impala on the other hand was uh, created by one of the popular um, Hadoop distributors Cloudera and um, uh, subsequently provided to the Apache Software Foundation. So collectively both these two technologies represent uh, Apache projects. Moving on to the actual differences in terms of how these two technologies operate. Um, so the first port of call is really trying to understand uh, from an architectural standpoint or at a very high level uh, mechanics of how these two systems operate. Hive historically was based on um, the native uh, Hadoop MapReduce technologies. So MapReduce, if you're not very familiar with it, is basically a distributed processing uh, technique um, originally uh, created uh, by Google and then obviously now it's uh, uh, quite prominent, if you will, um, or has been uh, quite prominent in the Hadoop world. Um, obviously, there are very many competing technologies and modern technologies um, that do distributed processing. However, uh, Hive as a technology basically relied on um, the Hadoop core framework. So that's uh, using HDFS um, as the underlying storage engine and using MapReduce to do uh, distributed processing. So anytime you write a um, Hive SQL uh, query, it would be translated under the hood into a MapReduce um, uh, kind of like uh, execution, if you will. However, uh, in more recent times, um, the, the idea of um, having a pluggable uh, execution engine was introduced into Hive. Uh, so you have a wealth of different options at your disposal. So you can plug in either MapReduce itself, um, you can plug in uh, an execution engine called Thes, or uh, interestingly, you can even plug Spark in as the execution engine. And we'll cover this idea of uh, the execution engines um, in just a bit when we talk about uh, the differences or the underlying architecture of uh, Hive and Impala. Now Impala on the other hand uses a very different technique. It's, uh, it's uh, the technique as such is what's referred to as a massively parallel processing or MPP and as an approach MPP has been around for a while. You have other um, systems outside of Hadoop that relied on MPP. Uh, for example, Vertica is a good example of um, a solution that relied on an MPP-based technology. Um, and one of the things that make Impala particularly fast is uh, because it's heavy usage of RAM. Uh, so as opposed to disk IO, it tries to cache and manage as much of uh, the data uh, in RAM as possible. So you find that um, just from a very fundamental architecture, uh, you're looking at two very different techniques to uh, query data on top of uh, Hadoop. Uh, 
one last point before we move on to um, some architectural conversations is uh, just an interesting bit about how these two technologies were built. Uh, Hive um, collectively represents different technologies, but at the core of it all, uh, there's a significant use of Java. Uh, whereas uh, the guys who built Impala decided to go down the path of uh, using C++. And uh, that's interesting um, uh, since um, if, uh, if you think about it, uh, if you wanted to squeeze the maximum performance uh, out of any system, uh, C++ represents a good investment uh, if, uh, if performance was uh, the primary goal. Um, C++ is a good choice. So, um, Basically, in a nutshell, you can see some of the building blocks of um, how these two systems were built uh, using different technologies. While that doesn't necessarily imply that Java-based technologies are necessarily slower, it's just an interesting fact to keep in mind that uh, the builders of uh, Impala really wanted to focus in on performance uh, from ground up. Um, but before we move on to the other topics, I thought it's helpful to sidestep the conversation and really understand uh, the architectural um, components, if you will, between Hive and Impala as it would benefit uh, further comparisons. Uh, so first off, let's take a look at um, Hive from an architecture standpoint. Um, this um, this is an architecture diagram from uh, the Apache Hive website. So have a look at it um, once um, you're done viewing the video, um, and um, hopefully it'll paint a better picture. Um, so on the left hand side, what you have here is Hive, um, and here you have the Hadoop side of the world. So you have your MapReduce and HDFS. Uh, again, uh, the keen-eyed um, viewers here might uh, immediately notice that, yep, um, uh, the MapReduce constructs described here doesn't necessarily represent um, what's new in MapReduce 2, but um, let's abstract that for the time being. So think of uh, the flow, if you will. So when you have um, a Hive SQL query uh, that's sent via the UI, maybe, or for example, even the command line interface, the CLI itself is a UI layer, if you will, and it sends um, some instructions to run a query. Uh, you have the driver that basically facilitates um, the coordination, if you will, uh, to the various other moving parts. Um, and as with any SQL-like environments, the very first port of call is uh, uh, to build a plan, if you will, an execution plan. Uh, it translates uh, the query into an execution plan. Uh, behind the scene, um, um, if you're familiar with uh, the Metastore, uh, that's a central repository, if you will, where all the metadata about a table is stored. Uh, so uh, essentially things like the table, uh, the type definition of the table, what columns it contains, and where the um, the data is actually stored, etc., is all managed within the Metastore. And finally, you have this uh, interesting bit here, which is the execution engine. So as I mentioned in the previous slide, historically um, um, Hive only had the MapReduce component as an execution engine. So if you use that as an example, you'll notice as illustrated here in this um, architecture diagram is the idea that if you use uh, the MapReduce component, um, uh, Hive would uh, um, then propagate out um, to uh, the Hadoop MapReduce um, constructs, if you will. So you have MapReduce activities that basically um, do that um, uh, number crunching, if you will, or data processing, uh, coordinates with uh, HDFS and returns the data back, and finally it's uh, streamed back uh, to the UI. That's basically how it worked with Hive uh, using MapReduce. And what's interesting these days is uh, the idea that you can plug in different execution engines. Um, so we talked about the fact that it, um, you know, historically it comes with MapReduce, but um, you have other execution engines uh, like uh, Thes and uh, also um, Apache Spark, which can be used as an execution engine uh, within Hive. So that's Hive at a very, very high level. Um, if we were to contrast that with how Impala works, um, so this diagram here, you can see it's uh, color-coded. Um, the yellow components represent what's native to Impala, whereas the blue components represent um, those which are um, part of, uh, say, uh, Hadoop or outside, immediately outside of um, Impala itself as a framework. 
Um, so think of it from uh, the standpoint of a query coming into uh, Impala. So it might be uh, through an ODBC kind of like connectivity. Um, every um, node uh, in your cluster, um, um, say your data node, which uh, can be co-located with um, what's referred to as your Impala daemon. So imagine, if you will, that you have three data nodes here. Um, each data node, obviously, you will want to co-locate that um, with your HDFS data node uh, for um, you know better throughput and performance. So what you have here is on every data node, you also have Impala, the daemon installed, and you have other components uh, of uh, Impala. That's your state store, and uh, there's one missing here, which is your catalog store, which collectively manages metadata and uh, works alongside Hive's meta store uh, to uh, manage that um, uh, collective metadata around um, your tables. Uh, so when you have a query that's coming in, it's received by one of the query planner components of um, Impala uh, sitting on uh, one or more, or, or a single actually, a single uh, data node. Uh, and the same node uh, which received that, uh, translate that into the query coordinator. The query coordinator uh, uh, alongside HDFS, the data node, and the execution engine determines which actual data node uh, will execute which parts of the query. So it um, basically splits out these tasks, if you will, to different uh, execution engine based on factors like data locality as well as cost-based optimizations to determine um, which node is best suited uh, to run that segment of the query or that part of the query. And it, uh, it requests um, the various nodes to actually do that execution. And once the execution is um, done, it streams it back uh, to the coordinator, which streams it back um, to the client application. So this is how um, Impala works. And this, um, as a pattern, if you will, is uh, what's represented by this idea of a massively parallel uh, distributed uh, execution uh, kind of like model. So that's uh, Impala at a very, very high level. Now that we understand the difference between how Hive works and this idea of a pluggable execution engine uh, and how Impala works, uh, it makes sense to actually step into some of the other um, attributes. And now, uh, coming to uh, the primary use case or typical use case around where you would use what technology, um, Hive, uh, given that historically it relied on uh, MapReduce was more of a batch-oriented solution. Uh, so when you compare the two historically, high was um, really about um, you know high throughput kind of like a, an environment, uh, and the pro the challenge with a, a high throughput kind of like a model is you also end up with high latency. That basically meant if you ran a query historically in Hive, it's kind of uh, like you know you run a query, go grab a coffee, and hopefully by the time you come back you would get some results. Um, whereas with uh, Impala, it was built with this idea that it's really targeted for low latency interactive query. So you run a query and um, either sub-second or in a couple of seconds, you get that uh, query result. So it's intended for uh, two different purposes. However, with uh, the idea of um, now that you have different uh, execution engines, uh, Thaze, for example, is a good uh, um, initiative around um, bringing Hive uh, more closer to an interactive query or low latency query. Um, so there's been a lot of innovation um, in more recent times um, in Hive uh, with uh, using Thaze and um, um, a framework referred to as uh, Live Long and Process uh, framework, which brings queries into something which is more interactive and uh, intended for more real-time uh, or interactive query kind of like uh, environments. Um, however, before we leave on this topic, it's also worthwhile to highlight that um, while both these two technologies can be used to perform not just querying, you can actually do ETL like activity. Um, Hive would be a much more suitable choice uh, for doing uh, very complex or large scale ETL as opposed to using Impala, which uh, uh, is really geared towards that kind of like low latency kind of like querying.
Now, given that's how uh, the two technologies differ, it's no surprise uh, who the intended audiences are. Uh, again, much of this um, tends to change as we find uh, Hive and Impala kind of like um, innovating and uh, ideas getting cross-pollinated, if you will. But uh, since um, much of um, the history of Hive and MapReduce uh, was meant for ETL and batch kind of like processing, we find that the primary audience of uh, Hive is uh, really about uh, data engineers and software developers, if you will, using a lot of Hive. Um, and since uh, you have um, really quick uh, responsive, uh, interactive, low latency kind of like querying capabilities within Impala. We have roles like data analysts and data scientists typically uh, interested in Impala. Some of the strengths, uh, if we were to compare and contrast Hive versus Impala, um, given that um, Hive uh, relies on MapReduce, which has um, got built-in fault tolerance, uh, it's no surprise that Hive gives you some of the best robustness in terms of fault tolerance. Um, as opposed to uh, Impala, given that it was really intended for interactive queries, it, it does not provide fault tolerance uh, in the same way that Hive does. So what does that mean in a nutshell? Let's say, for example, you're running a huge ETL operation or maybe a ginormous query, a really large query, um, and you, you are trying to run it across both these two systems. And let's just say, if in case of Hive, uh, let's say it's uh, running for many, many hours, or maybe, for example, it's an ETL that's spanning days. Uh, and let's say one of the nodes failed. Um, you have, say, a five node um, system, five data node environment, and one of the data nodes failed. Uh, what would happen is uh, Hive is able to recover from that. And uh, act uh, since it's got fault tolerance built in, it'll recover from that uh, failure and continue processing the query and get back the results for you. How oh, that's not the case with Impala. Again, Impala is intended to run uh, interactive queries, so it's unlikely that the query that you've run anyways on Impala is going to span that many hours or days, so it's, uh, it's really not geared for that kind of a workload. Uh, also interesting in terms of uh, the kind of queries that um, you will typically run on these two systems tend can be a bit different uh, in the sense that Impala is really geared to run um, kind of like that analytical type query. So if you come from a data warehousing background, you'll be familiar with this idea of facts and dimensions and ideas around star schema. Um, so the idea of using Impala is uh, typically when you have a star schema kind of like a design and you want to join a large fact table with uh, n number of dimension tables, uh, Impala is typically geared towards that kind of like a data model. Uh, for that matter, even Hive can do that quite well, but uh, also interesting to know that if you were to join even things like large fact tables with other fact tables, uh, like billions of rows of data, you want to join that with other billions of rows, um, Hive is really, really uh, quite powerful when it comes to writing those kind of either queries or any ETL kind of like tasks. Moving on to the next um, topic, which is really about um, the supported files and data formats. Uh, what's interesting is um, given the fact that um, Hive is uh, represented in pretty much every uh, single Hadoop distribution, um, it represents one of the visions around uh, using Hadoop in the first place, which is really about working with uh, different types of data, uh, different um, structured as well as unstructured uh, formats. So hence, um, you have the widest possible uh, support for different file formats uh, in Hive. Um, on the other hand, uh, when it comes to Impala, while there's uh, quite a uh, wide support in terms of the popular file formats, uh, Impala is really geared towards optimizing query performance. So given that's what it's really intended to do, it, it, uh, it's no surprise that um, uh, it works optimally when you're using Apache Parquet. Um, so if you're looking at various file formats and you had to ensure that um, your environment worked with Impala, your best bet is to actually use Apache Parquet as the underlying uh, format and uh, that would be super optimized for Impala. Uh, again, keep in mind um, the same file format. If you use Apache Parquet, it works um, really well with Hive as well, but um, worthwhile highlighting that um, uh, if you are looking at Impala, you definitely want to uh, keep um, Apache Parquet in mind.
from a resource management um, uh, given that uh, Hive is a native component, if you will, within the whole um, Hadoop ecosystem, it's no surprise again that it relies on uh, Hadoop's uh, Yarn for resource management. So anytime you run a query in Hive, like select star from, uh, say, a, a table, uh, uh, obviously it's a bad idea to do select star, but yeah, bear with me on that. Um, so if you run a select query, if you will, uh, behind the scene, it um, it's uh, the entire resource management uh, is uh, completely managed within Yarn. Uh, Impala, on the other hand, historically did not rely on Yarn. Um, it had its own native capabilities to manage resources. Um, however, recent work on Impala is uh, is showing signs of it integrating well with Yarn, and that uh, that's uh, that can be useful uh, when you have an environment uh, hybrid environment where you have both um, Impala and Yarn. I'm sorry, Impala and Hive running in the same cluster. Uh, if you did not have the same uh, resource manager, it becomes a bit of a challenge trying to coordinate uh, resources like RAM. Uh, for example, uh, how do you allocate resources for yarn jobs versus uh, Impala? So there's, um, there can be contention, if you will, uh, depending on um, queries, uh, kind of like being run, um, uh, queries um, Impala running at the same time as Hive. So how do you manage that resources, if you will? Um, however, um, the implementation of Yarn is still relatively new, so it's not yet battle tested, if I could put it quite simply. And then finally, coming down to um, the distributions of uh, Hadoop that support these two technologies. Um, so Hive is um, uh, ubiquitous uh, across all uh, Hadoop uh, distributions, uh, both um, traditional ones as well as uh, your native cloud-based uh, ones like um, AWS EMR, for example, all support uh, Hive. Um, however, uh, worthwhile pointing out that there's quite a lot of work that's being done by Hortonworks, um, predominantly around um, supporting different execution engines like Thais and um, um, Live Long and uh, Process frameworks, if you will, um, that is instrumental in enabling Hive to be used for both interactive queries as well as uh, batch-based queries. And uh, it's uh, while it's all Apache and open source project, you'll find that much of that settings is already wired up and easy to deploy uh, within Hortonworks. Uh, Impala, on the other hand, um, given that it's uh, an innovation of, of uh, Cloudera, uh, you'll find that it's uh, primarily geared towards uh, deployment within Cloudera's um, distribution of uh, Hadoop. Uh, again, it's an Apache project, uh, which implies that you can install it pretty much on any distribution. Um, however, the mechanics of deploying and configuring it is, uh, is a lot easier if you had Cloudera. Uh, interesting to note that MapR, um, another uh, distributor in the Hadoop world, also support uh, Impala. Um, further, a uh, uh, point of interest is that uh, Amazon um, historically had support for Impala. Um, however, more recently, they decided to drop support. And not necessarily because uh, Impala wasn't a good choice. Um, it's uh, it, the, the plans kind of like unfolded once they launched um, Apache, uh, I'm sorry, once they launched uh, uh, another product uh, in Amazon, uh, which, um, well, the name eludes me. F uh, oh, yes, um, it's um, Amazon's Athena project. Um, so Athena has uh, an underlying implementation with an Amazon, um, relies on another MPP technology, uh, which is Presto. Uh, so it just gives you an idea that um, you know while different vendors offer different benefits to end customers, uh, you'll notice that not all of them rely solely on top of Hive. They do use other technologies like um, MPP-based technologies like Impala, or for that matter, even things like Presto, for example, to provide choices uh, to end customers. Uh, which brings an interesting question. How do you compare and contrast um, uh, the interactive query performance between Hive uh, using Thais and LLAP versus uh, Cloudera's um, Impala. And that can be a bit tricky because, uh, it, as you can see, no one 
uh, distribution really gives you both pre-installed, so you'll have to do your own benchmarking. Um, so again, it's um, uh, I'm not particularly recommending one or the other. It's really this idea that you have these two choices. Uh, which brings down to uh, the last piece of conversation for this video, which is um, this idea of uh, how you can have environments which um, utilize both Hive and Impala together. Uh, so it's uh, it's uh, it's one of the most common things an organization would want to do if uh, they were relying on Impala, given that Hive uh, is part of um, the base Hadoop implementation or, or part of the uh, Hadoop suite, if you will. Um, so again, it's important to keep in mind that anytime you create tables, either within Impala or with Hive, it's uh, it's stored within the Hive Metastore. So let's just say, for example, you created a table. I'll use a simple example. Say it's an employee table and you have uh, name, uh, designation, and department. Say if you created that within Hive, uh, the the metadata is uh, stored in the Hive Metastore and of course the data is uh, sitting on top of HDFS and uh, because of that you can query that using Impala and vice versa if you created a table using Impala uh, you could query that in Hive so again it gives you the best of both if you will so uh, near real time kind of like uh, interactive uh, query, low latency query through Impala. And if you wanted to do um, batch based ETL or even large scale uh, query operations, you could use Hive. So it's uh, really about uh, leveraging the benefit of uh, both these two. So that's uh, a good example of how you can have both of these uh, kind of like coexist. Uh, so that brings us uh, to a conclusion or an end of uh, this video. Uh, hope you liked the video and it was informative. Uh, do like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.